Hello and welcome everybody to today's masterclass on um, marketing and the RTO standards and looking at the CRICOS standards as well for your monthly compliance webinar. I did ask for some volunteers for today for me to review their social media marketing. Um, we don't have any, so I'm going to be choosing a range. I've already chosen a range of different websites and social media platforms that I will be reviewing as part of today's webinar. Okay, so uh, today's webinar is marketing and we're looking at standard 4.1 and the CRICOS standards 1.1 to 1.5, which are all very similar with what you need to have in place. As per usual, this webinar forms part of your continuous improvement process under standard 2.2. Following this webinar, we recommend that you hold a Q&C meeting and you record any updates that may be required uh, following the webinar. That includes any policies, procedures, forms or documentation that may need to be updated. You may also want to update your social media as well as your website uh, based on the content that we review today. Okay, so standard 4.1 is all about marketing and we're in a new world now because marketing is very different uh, from what we used to have. And we have a lot more social media platforms that we're using for marketing. So I'm gonna go through some key things that you need to have in place on your website, as well as what should be um, on your marketing. And that can be in social media, as well as your marketing materials. A key requirement of the standards is that all your marketing needs to be approved by one key person within your organisation. And that generally will be the CEO. But you may also have someone else that is responsible for compliance within your RTO. As a minimum, you need to ensure that your marketing material includes an outline of the course, the units that are included, as well as all your fees that are involved within the course. So that includes course fees, administration fees, and even um, you may have material fees that need to be in place. You also need to have in place uh, terms and conditions of enrollment, including refund fees, cooling off period, and a nature of a guarantee that you will complete the training once uh, commenced and the fees and charges for any additional services that you may have. So it needs to be really clear on your marketing that you have all of these. We have a policy and procedure in the Q&C manual for marketing approval. I highly recommend that you go through your Q&C manual and have a look at standard 4.1, where we cover all of the marketing requirements. And as we uh, have on this page, uh, the key person that approves the marketing is the CEO. If, you, if it is not the CEO in your organisation, you should update the policies and procedures to reflect who is the main person that needs to be um, ensuring that the marketing is correct. No marketing can guarantee that the student will successfully complete the training because we don't know they need to complete a range of assessments first uh, before you can determine whether they're competent within the unit of competencies or the training product. Uh, can complete the training product uh, in a way that's not compliant with the training and assessment requirements. So what's outlined within your training and assessment strategies. And it's very clear that your training matches your training and assessment strategies, including your delivery and assessment plans and will obtain a particular employment outcome. You can't guarantee an employment outcome. If you have statistics that uh, demonstrate your outcomes, then you can use your statistics, but you cannot guarantee employment opportunities following completion of the training. So we have a course flyer template that you can use uh, for guidance on what, that, what needs to be in your marketing materials as a minimum. On here, we actually cover a few of those. So you need to ensure that you have your RTO e details, including your RTO ID, the qualification code and title or the unit code and title of the training product that you are delivering, 
location of all the training. So different, um, if you've got different locations for practical and theory, you need to ensure that you have all of the locations on the marketing. The duration of the training. So when will it start? When will it finish? Uh, how long are the days? How many hours? Um, it should be very clear to the student what the expectations will be. Uh, skills and knowledge that is required of the students prior to course commencement should also be addressed uh, within your marketing materials. So you need to make sure that that's all updated as well and your modes of delivery. All of the information that should go on your marketing should come from your training and assessment strategy. In the Vivacity template that we use for our training and assessment strategies, we've highlighted in blue everything within the TARS that should also be in your marketing. So it makes it nice and clear and easy for you to be able to add that information uh, onto your marketing materials. You should also have a breakdown of the units. So what units are the students going to be required to complete? Uh, and the fees, including course fees, administration fees, material fees, and any other charges. For example, you might have a requirement that the student is required to complete a police record check. So you need to ensure that you've got the requirements and how much it costs for them to do that. The other one is ensuring, uh, so you may have a licensed outcome. If there is a licensed outcome with your qualification, you need to ensure that you've got instructions in there about the requirements for the license outcome. For example, responsible service of alcohol, they get a uh, license outcome at the end of RSA course. And there is a requirement in each state on how to access, uh, they might have an RSA card or their credentials from the state authority for RSA. So you need to identify uh, what that process is, how much it is, so you can put an estimated cost. You can also put links to other websites where they, the license outcome um, has more details on their website. What are your payment terms, including the timing of pa payment of fees, so amount of fees and how often you will be taking uh, progress payments? If there's a non-refundable administration fee or deposit, it, that needs to also be clear on your marketing material. If you conduct reassessment for a student, is there a fee involved? And if so, you need to be clear and transparent of what that reassessment fee may be. The course flyer complies with the policies and procedures under marketing and advertising. So you need to make sure that, uh, you no, know, have a look at our template that we have. We also have a marketing checklist that you can use that's on Unicorn that you can download that uh, identifies what you need to have on your marketing materials. You may also have an organisational profile or you'll have your organisational profile on your website. So this includes information about who you are as an RTO, what's on your scope of registration and what do you deliver? Uh, it's a good tool for applying for government funding and marketing for the company and it assists with the decision making process for choosing an RTO and why should someone choose your RTO over another RTO. It can be used for collating information to go onto the website, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the, we've got an organisational profile template that you can use and it's really good for using uh, as data that you can include on your website. And it should include more information about the services you provide, like the additional services that you may provide, such as academic studies, support, access to computers, access to equipment, uh, should be clear on all of your marketing. Okay, so in your, on your website, the organisational website should include each course that is offered by your RTO and it should only be, you should only have on your website what is listed on training.gov.au as a current training product on your scope of registration. If you are advertising or marketing any training products that is not on your scope of registration, for example, you might be applying to place a training product onto your scope of registration, you cannot market that on your website. And the reason why is because you don't actually have it on your scope. So um, the other situation where it may be as well is you have a superseded training product that you're still marketing on your website with the old code and title. 
So you need to make sure that you've updated all of the information. So whenever there is a change in training packages, one of the uh, items on your checklists to be completed is making sure that you're updating your website as well with the updated code and title and the qualification requirements. There should also be a breakdown of units. If you are delivering more than one unit, uh, should be what units are you offering as part of the qualification so that the students are able to make uh, a informed decision about the type of training and the uh, units of competencies that they'll be completing. Once again, all of your fees, so whatever those fees may be, uh, it just you can charge whatever you like. You just got to be clear and transparent of what all of those fees are. Uh, you need to also make sure that the payment terms, including the timing and the amount of uh, uh, fees that are going to be charged, are clear on your marketing material. And as I said before, the reassessment fees. Okay, so we didn't have anybody who was uh, sharing their website today. So, um, so I volunteered a couple of RTOs myself. <laughs> so I've randomly selected a number of RTOs uh, where we're gonna have a look at their websites. Okay, so uh, first of all, I just want to let you know that on the uh, ASQA website, there is a fact sheet that you can access that includes uh, all of the requirements for marketing within your RTO. So the information that we've included in today's webinar has come from this fact sheet. I've just popped the link in the chat. So if you'd like to access that, you can do that now. Okay, first uh, website I'm going to have a look at. So this um, RTO is called Rose Training. And we're just gonna have a look through the website of what they have on the website um, and what is uh, compliant and what is not compliant. So, so far it's looking uh, quite good. They've got the RTO code and you should have your RTO code in the footer of your website, uh, but you should also have your ABN listed in the, um, in the footer of your website as well. So it should be RTO code and your ABN should be listed in there. There's also an address, a phone number and email address. Uh, but the requirements are RTO code and you should also have your ABN in there as well. So let's have a look at a qualification. Uh, so it looks like, so we've got a NAT unit here. So uh, they're delivering a course in community uh, justice services. Uh, for Queensland, and there's also a certificate for in celebrancy um, and platinum business pack. Okay, so let's have a look at the celebrancy one. So it's got code and title, so that's correct. You need to ensure that you have the code and title of the training product on uh, next to each other on your website. It's also got an outline of the training and how they are going to deliver it. Uh, they're promoting their platinum business pack as well. They've got the different options of study online, face-to-face -face, uh, Zoom classroom or Zoom plus business pack. Uh, they've got it clearly outlined the start dates, so when their start dates are and how they're delivering that training um, and the location of that training with the fees. So it's very clear in here when the start dates are and what's included. So let's have a look at a five-day face-to-face uh, -face Zoom classroom which would worry me if they're only got five days. So that's um, volume of learning that would concern me. So let's see what happens when I go to enrol now. Okay, so it's just uh, taking me straight into the course and uh, asking me to pay, which is great. Um, but there's not enough information in there about uh, the training. So let's go back to the training and we'll see what else they've got in there. So basically you, you can purchase uh, straight there. You can also schedule a call uh, to discuss further and the information about the instructor. Uh, they've also got the structure here. So they've actually outlined, so a five day face-to-face -face Zoom classroom, Monday to Friday portfolio of work, so online study, five consecutive Saturdays to face-to-face -to -face, uh, Zoom portfolio, five consecutive Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it looks like it's been delivered in five days. 
which I would be concerned about with uh, online learning. So what else are they going to include in there? So um, I don't have the training and assessment strategy for this. If I did, I'd be uh, looking at it and addressing whether it matches uh, the delivery, uh, tr delivery and assessment plan and the training and assessment strategy. Okay, it goes back into fees. So it's got the structure, but it's not actually saying, oh, we've got the units over here. It hasn't got the units there. Uh, it's got what the outcomes are. So on successful completion, you will be awarded with the certificate, which is the minimum requirement for registration as a marriage celebrant. Once you have received your certificate, you can contact, so they've included the information about what you need to do next once you have completed uh, the training. Uh, now, what uh, it does have a link, but it doesn't actually say if there's any fees uh, that may be involved. Looks like I'm being redirected. You can see it has that information in there. Because uh, there's most probably going to be a fee around uh, becoming a celebrant. So rules, uh, they've got different rules in there, application fees. So it is not clear. They've got a link, which is great. That's really good. But it's not clear on here that there are additional fees. And that should be included on the page. So we've already uh, discovered that there is a non-compliance on this website because they haven't actually got the fees in here. So they should put um, what the fees are. And you can just say an estimate as well. You don't actually have to say the actual fees. And here is a link to learn more about those fees. But it doesn't say that it comes at a cost on here. So it's not clear and transparent to the student. Uh, got their prices. Uh, they've broken down the units. So what are compulsory? What are the mandatory units for the marriage celebrancy and their elective units? They've also addressed uh, volume of learning. Uh, okay, so they're saying it's 52 weeks of online tuition. I'd like to see how this matches the um, uh, training and assessment strategy. Uh, so they've got 28 hours per week for unsupervised learner activity. Okay, um, and then it's got how to enroll. So other than uh, those ones that I've picked up, uh, this is pretty good. It's nice and clear. They're not using the logos inappropriately, um, which is good. Uh, and it's clear what the, what the training is. So we'll just have a look at their About Us page. So we've got some information about the organisation, uh, got their location, which is fine. So there's no inappropriate use of logos. Uh, they've explained what the NRT logo is here. Uh, not sure whether you're allowed to actually have the logo on the page, but um, uh, they've got the logo there. Now, with the NRT logo, what I would recommend is only put it on your website if you think you really need it, because not everyone uh, knows what the NRT logo is. You just got to be careful with how you're um, using the logo. Okay, so um, so far so good. It's looking uh, pretty good other than that uh, didn't have it clear on their website that there were additional fees to become a marriage celebrant. So let's have a look now at their Facebook page. So this is their Facebook page. As you can see, they've got the RTO name and the code, the RTO code um, or ID for their RTO, which is what is required for um, your any of your social media platforms. So all social media platforms should include the name, the legal name or the trading name of the RTO and the RTO ID in the title of the, um, so it could be Twitter, Instagram, uh, also on Facebook. And the reason why is then every time you post, you're going to have your RTO ID in every single post. So it makes it much clearer who you are and, um, and what your RTO, so they can look up your RTO. Uh, so we can see there's uh, different uh, photos and information that they've put in here. Uh, so some things you've got to be careful of is making sure that you're not using uh, logos inappropriately. So um, for example, the NRT or the uh, AQF 
uh, logo. So it's looking good so far, can't see any inappropriate use. I did come across a Facebook page for an RTO uh, that actually had uh, the a uh, NRT logo as their logo on the website, and that you cannot do. You cannot have the NRT logo um, in as your logo, and you cannot have it on here either. It has to be next to the code and title of the training product, so it can't be in the banner as well. So you need to make sure that you're uh, being very careful with how you're using the logo. It says that they're an RTO. It's got their website, um, and it's got their RTO code and ID. So uh, so it, all, all quite good there. Can't see any uh, non-compliances there. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at another one. So this is uh, Selmar Institute of Education. They deliver childcare training. So uh, they've got a call to action at the top, which is all fine. Uh, got what their training is. We'll go and have a look at some of the training, uh, who their trainers and assessors are that they're nationally accredited, and what their application fees are. Uh, so they've made it uh, stated that there's a zero application fee. So as long as you're making it clear on there. Now, here's the first non-compliance. There's an NRT logo on here. Uh, you can only have the NRT logo next to the code and title of the training product. So if you had the NRT logo here, it would be compliant, but this runs the risk of being non-compliant because it's just on the page, on the full page. Uh, there's also another non-compliance further down. They've used the AQF logo, so the Australian Qualifications Framework logo. You cannot use this logo on your website unless it's next to the code and title of the training product. You definitely cannot have it in the footer. Uh, you can't have the NRT logo or the AQF logo in the footer. They're a member of ITECA, so uh, they're allowed to use the logo from ITECA. Uh, Early Childhood Australia, you'd need to look at their terms and conditions. They need to get written permission from any other, so the Australian Child Care Alliance, they need to get written permission to be able to use their logo on the website. So if ASPA were to audit this RTO right now, um, and they saw all these logos. One, this one would be non-compliant, having the AQF logo on there, uh, but the other ones they would want to see evidence that the RTO has um, written permission to use those logos on their website. So we can see in their footer, they've got the RTO ID and they've got their ACN, uh, which is compliant. So doing that, that's fine. All right, so let's have a look at a course now. We'll just see now. So it's taken me straight into inquiring, but I can't actually look it up. <laughs> okay, all right. They haven't got enough information on this website to provide sufficient inf information prior to course commencement. It looks like it's just a landing page and they haven't got any links to be able to so you go, just go straight into an inquire now, but it doesn't tell you what units, how long, when they're delivered. It's got 280 hours uh, work placement and that it's a 14 month course, but it doesn't have any commencement dates or completion dates. Now it might be when you complete the inquire now, they might actually send you out uh, an information booklet or something that would say state what that is, but it's not clear and transparent on their website. Uh, so they've got, you know, they've got 15 years experience, you've got uh, trainers and support. So this is all compliant as well. They're not guaranteeing any employment outcome uh, based on completing their training. Uh, but yeah, definitely not enough information on this website to uh, that meets the requirements of the standards. Okay, let's have a look at their Facebook page. So uh, they've got this one correct. So they've got the name of the RTO with the RTO ID on here. Uh, no um, uh, logos in the wrong place in there. Got some video uh, footage, um, got the graduations and things like that. So that's, that's looking good. We'll just have a quick squeeze through to have a look um, at what they're advertising. So what's really important if you are advertising a qualification, you need to have the code and title of that uh, training product on the website as well. So you need to be having a look at those. 
okay, this is looking good otherwise, uh, all good. They haven't got a lot of uh, information on there. So that's looking good. Uh, they've got their uh, company name up here that they're an RTO, their RTO ID as well. Um, and they've got some good information on here. So that's, that's compliant in there. Okay, another one we're gonna have a look at. So this is essential business training. Uh, so they uh, deliver business courses. Uh, so they've got a range of courses that they're delivering, got their programs, got what their courses are. So, so far, so good. Uh, okay, business training for hospitality. Students, trainers. Okay, this is looking good. They can do a search. No, there's no ABN. So no ABN in the, oh no, there it is, sorry. There it is, I've got the ABN. So ABN, RTO ID, uh, and New South Wales RTO ID. I don't know what that's for. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. We'll have to see what that's, that's for. All right, so let's have a look at their business courses. So we're just looking at you know, the availability. Uh, they've got their certificate for in business, use the code and title, which is correct. Uh, they've got the, uh, an outline of the course, and then they've also got uh, a page on, on the course. So got the code and title of the training product in here as well, who is a suitable candidate. The unit, well, they've got that is six core units and six electives but it doesn't actually, oh, there we go. We've got the units here. So we've got the core units here. Uh, doesn't actually say what the electives are. So how are they setting that out? Looks like they've just copied and pasted this from training.gov.au, this information, but it's not very clear for a student to be able to understand. If you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do a copy and paste from training.gov.au, put the link in here as well so that they can look it up on training.gov.au because here it says they've got these electives, but it's not clear what those electives are. The elective should be what's on your training and assessment strategy. If you have different streams, then you need to make it clear on your website and your marketing what those different streams are so and how they're delivered. Okay, so uh, they've got no, uh, they haven't been using the logo, so you can also download uh, the course brochure, which would have more information, I'm assuming. Uh, doesn't have start and end dates, uh, doesn't have, uh, it may have it on the flyer, uh, but we'll have a look at that and see what they have. Uh, okay, let's see what they've got for retail. So they've got their courses that are available, full course details that you can look up. Uh, so what the core units are, but once again, haven't got the electives in there. Uh, you can also download a brochure. Doesn't look like their download button's actually working. <laughs> so no, no downloads are happening. So at the moment, this is non-compliant because it hasn't got enough information in here. Now, the way you can do it, so if you have a range of courses that you're delivering, you don't have to have the course schedule on this um, same page as the course, but you could have a schedule on a different page with a link from this page to the schedule page. Uh, so it should be clear what those, uh, what the training is and how you're going to be delivering it um, and when are the commencement dates and completion dates. Now, it could be that this information is provided via email, uh, but it is best that you also include more information on the website. Um, when, as, it, as information goes, there's not a lot of information on this website. Okay, here's their uh, Facebook page. So they've got uh, RTO name and ID, which is good. Uh, I've used their logo uh, up the top there. So uh, that's good. They've got the code and title. Um, just see if they've got, okay. So they're promoting a disability support workers course here. So they've got a NAT code for it. Uh, so they've used the code and title of the course, which is good. Um, the next step uh, that I might do is I might even go on to uh, training.gov.au to have a look. Now you can see they've used the NRT logo on here. 
uh, which is okay because they've got the code and title of the training product um, in the advert as well. So, uh, so that is compliant. So if they were doing a non-accredited course and had, had the NIT logo on there, then that would be non-compliant. Okay, they've got an NIT logo here, uh, but they've got the first aid, H-L-T-A-I-D-001. Uh, uh, the, because they've got the RTO ID in their name, this makes it compliant. Okay, so, yep, so it's looking quite good. Um, yep, looking all compliant at the moment. Okay, so one last one we're going to have a look at. Uh, this is a community college uh at, that uh delivers a range of different training products i chose a community college because they deliver accredited as well as non-accredited training so we want to make sure that they are compliant with their non-accredited and accredited just got a question do we need to follow these same guidelines for a and i know um, andrew an enterprise rto so yes uh, you need to make sure it's clear you don't have any fees so you don't need to worry about the fees but you should be clear with the training products that should be on your marketing. So if you have an intranet, it should be clear on there what the employees are signing up for when they go into the training. So yes, you will need to put that in there. Okay, so having a look, they've got their qualifications, accredited licenses and short courses. They've also made it clear here that they've got non-accredited courses as well. Got the RTO ID. Uh, the name of the RTO. They've also got the ABN uh, here, uh, but it's not in the footer. It's up up, up the top. Uh, and I can't see whether they have it in the footer. Nope, so it's not in the footer. Uh, they should have it in the footer down here as well, uh, just to make it clear. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at their qualifications. Okay, so it's got an outline of different courses that they have on offer. So let's have a look at the business one. We've got code and title, but it's around the wrong way. So title and code uh, should be the other way around, code and title. And when we go into the course, uh, it says that they can register. They've got the NRT logo on here, and I don't know what else. There's something else in there as well. Uh, I'd be very careful with that. It's supposed to be next to uh, the uh, code and title. Having your flyers on the internet uh, does this for you, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, okay, so they've outlined who the course is for, the course delivery, um, how they're going to deliver it, uh, the place uh, of where it can be delivered. Um, yeah, not sure about the NRT logo there. It's not next to the code and title. It's supposed to be next to the code and title of the training product. So having it there, that's not very good at all. And it's on their enrollment inquiry form, um, which would be not. Okay, so they've got uh, other contact information. Um, yeah, so it doesn't list doesn't list the units. So it hasn't got what units, what are the core, what are the electives, how long the course goes for. There's not enough information in there uh, to be provided. Once again, they may provide uh, further information uh, to the student via email, but it really should be on the website as well. Let's have a look what they have for aged care. Uh, so they've got uh, qualifications within here. Once again, the code is after the title. It's not in the same, it's not in the correct order. It's got pathway to uni nursing, but they need to also clarify that what is that pathway. So I'll be looking for that as well. Uh, so there's a bridging program that they can access. It's got the course delivery. Uh, so search for an aging support plus enjoy. 120 hours of work placement, but it doesn't say how long this certificate's going to take. Uh, students can attend university campus to complete the university training. Yeah, there's not enough information on here. This training is subsidised by New South Wales government. Funded places are available. So they've got a link for eligibility. 
So we've got their Smart and Skilled page and links to the Smart and Skilled. And then you can go onto the Smart and Skilled website and look up the training uh, from there. So there is some information in there. Okay, let's go back. Uh, okay, so as of 1 January 2015, yeah, okay, USI. So they've got uh, information about USI in there as well. So once again, it's not clear what the units are that they're completing, how long it's going to take to complete. It doesn't even say whether it's a 12-month course or a six-month course or it doesn't say that. Uh, it has their work placement, but there's insufficient information on here. So you need to make sure it's really clear and transparent to the student prior to course commencement, uh, what's going to be involved uh, with the delivery of that training. Okay, all right, so there's some websites um, and that gives you an idea of what needs to be on your websites and also on your social media. So uh, when you are looking at your social media, you need to make sure that you're also looking at all of the different um, social media sites that you may be using. Okay, so let's have a look at the use of logos. These, the logos are very, very strict on how you use them. Um, and you've got to be very, very careful with where you place them in your marketing material. You can't distort it. You can't change the logo. I'm going to go through that a bit further. And you cannot use these logos on any non-accredited training. So you want to make sure it's clear what is accredited and what is non-accredited training. Uh, and these logos can only be used on those pages. I have seen uh, websites where the training organisation delivers accredited and non-accredited training, and they have the NRT and the AQF logo in their footer, which is non-compliant. So you need to be very careful uh, when you're using these logos. Definitely don't use them in the footer. Okay, so uh, this is the AQF logo and the N NRT logo. Um, and we're just gonna go through some uh, things that you cannot do with these logos. So you can't stretch them, you can't uh, squish them in neither, you can't change the color. So you can't change, it can be either grayscale or the authorized colors that are used on these logos. Um, so you can't change the colour at all. Uh, I have had an incident where I went into an RTO and they created these beautiful embossed certificates where they changed all the logo colours to silver. So the, um, on their certificates, all the logos were in silver and that's a non-compliance. You can either use grayscale or you use the actual colour. Uh, be very careful how you're using it in your marketing uh, to make sure that you're not um, stretching the logo or using it uh, to the wrong dimensions. Okay, standard 1.1 1 .1 is the registered provider. So this is for CRICOS. Uh, the registered provider must ensure that the marketing and promotion of its courses and education services in connection with the recruitment of overseas students. So if you're using any third parties, um, uh, including an education agent, you're making sure that, that the, you're still complying with the requirements of the standards for CRICOS. Um, within CRICOS, you also need to have a written agreement uh, for your students when you're looking at enrolment, that's part of your materials. You would also have a uh, international uh, prospectus for your students, which needs to have additional information that is provided to the student uh, prior to course commencement. Uh, there is a risk when you're using third parties that they may provide inaccurate or um, incorrect information on their marketing. So this is why you need to have one key person within your organisation that is approving all of your marketing. Uh, so as a registered provider, you need to, uh, you cannot, uh, so you must not claim to commit to secure. So once again, um, a bit like the employment outcomes and the certificate outcomes, you cannot uh, state that they'll have a migration outcome with enrolment uh, with an international provider. Uh, they cannot also guarantee any successful education assessment outcome for the student as well, uh, same as what they had in the um, standards for RTOs as well. So as a CRICOS provider, the additional requirements is not only do you need to use your RTO ID, 
you also need to use your CRICOS ID. So it needs to be clear on your marketing um, what your CRICOS ID is for it, um, uh, advertising your international training. So the provider must include its CRICOS registered name and registration number on any written or online material uh, for their marketing and make it clear uh, uh, that they are approved as a provider. Standard 1.5 is the registered provider must not actively recruit a student where this uh, conflicts the requirements of uh, Standard 7 for overseas student transfers. So there is a requirement with student transfers uh, that a student cannot transfer to another provider within six months of commencing uh, their training at an RTO. So you need to make sure that that's clear on your marketing as well. Okay, so your marketing material, you need to make sure, have a look at the policies and procedures for marketing. Have a look at the uh, what you need to have in place. Uh, use that uh, marketing checklist that we have also on Unicorn. Um, and if you're using our marketing flyers, uh, is going to be compliant as long as you haven't deleted anything that we have uh, on the marketing flyers. Uh, but uh, as a Vivacity member, uh, you can also use our services to have a look at your marketing materials. So just get in contact with support at vivacity.com.au uh, and one of our team can have a look at that. Make sure you review following this webinar, you go through your policies and procedures and make sure that you're actually doing what it says that you are should be doing. Uh, within your policies and procedures. Um, make sure you haven't got any guarantees anywhere on your marketing material of an outcome uh, or an employment outcome. Uh, so need to update that. Have a look at your course flyers as well. Does it have the RTO ID? Does it have your ABN on your website? Uh, have you used the code and title of the training product with uh, the logo? Where are the logos that you're using? Uh, so uh, this is a great time to do a little audit of your website to make sure that it is compliant. Uh, once again, we've got the organisational profile as well that you can have a look at as well. Now, you need to be very careful if you have any third parties that are marketing on your behalf, because as the RTO, you are also responsible for any third party that may be marketing on your behalf. So this could be a third party is just doing marketing. Uh, it could be a third party that is recruiting students on your behalf, uh, where they might be uh, bringing students into your RTO, but it could be through a third party that are delivering training under your scope of registration. So you need to make sure that those third parties are also meeting the requirements of your policies and procedures uh, with, with regards to marketing. Uh, it can be quite risky if you are not monitoring your third parties and making sure that they're including uh, the relevant information that should be included on the marketing. So uh, make sure you're following this process and that you have a clear uh, process for approval. Go check your websites against all of these requirements. Do you have your RTO ID, your CRICOS ID, your legal entity name? Um, your entrance requirements and prerequisites, the course structure and delivery modes, so face-to-face, -face, online, Zoom, um, your training code, uh, code and title should be used on the website. Uh, if you're a CRICOS provider, you should have your CRICOS code on there as well. Uh, breakdown of all of the units if you're delivering full qualifications. Uh, all of your fees should be clear and transparent in the marketing material prior to course commencement and your payment terms and conditions. And of course, if there's a fee for reassessment, that needs to be clear on your marketing as well. So, uh, yep, so we've got the logos. It looks like I've got a, a bit of a double up in here with the logos. Okay, that's it for today. So we've gone through all of the marketing. Um, if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat. I'd love to answer any of those questions that you may have. Uh, the next webinar will be on the 1st of November, which is enrolment and progression and recruitment of an overseas student. So for the RTO, we'll be looking at standards 5.1 to 5.3, 7.3 and 3.5, which is all of the requirements for enrolling a student and looking at those uh, fees that you collect prior to course commencement, uh, but also making sure that you have a smooth process 
for your enrollment. Uh, and for CRICOS, we'll also be looking at the CRICOS uh, enrolment requirements as well. So uh, that will, webinar will be at three o'clock on the 1st of November. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Uh, as per usual, this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to Vivacity Training and you'll be able to access on Vivacity Training. Uh, you should also know that the strategic planning retreat is coming up next month, the 25th and 26th of November. There's information coming out soon uh, about this strategic planning retreat, including how to register for your organisation. We will be delivering the strategic planning retreat over two days online, uh, which you could do either do in the office or from home. And there will be information packs that will be sent out to uh, each provider. It's going to be held on the 25th and 26th of November. So it's a Thursday, Friday. Uh, so lock those dates in to your calendar. Uh, it's going to be really good strategic planning retreat. I'd also highly recommend that you get onto the mastermind because over the next six to eight weeks, we're going to be prepping you for the strategic planning retreat through the mastermind. So the mastermind is 10.30 a.m. every Monday, uh, except for public holidays. So we had it today uh, due to the public holiday yesterday. Uh, so uh, if you, uh, we've also uploaded the uh, recording from this morning where I cover everything about getting prepared for the strategic uh, planning retreat, but there is more information that's gonna be coming out every Monday about the strategic planning retreat. So thank you very much for attending today and I look forward to seeing you on the 1st of November and also at the Mastermind. Bye for now.